All right, are you ready for this? Let's do this. Are you ready for the first one? Then the flaws of inheritance. By the way, so this is very, uh, this is, let's see, marker. Let's see, hold on. Uh, the flaws of inheritance. All right. So real talk, I think that this person right here, Code Aesthetics, is like one of the best coding YouTubers right now. He has five videos up in 150,000 subs. Like the guy, I don't know what he does. It's just awesome. And I saw one of his videos and I loved it. So I wanted to watch another one. I just wanted to see what he made here. And so let's watch this. You may have heard the Whoa. saying, prefer a con Okay, let's turn that down. Let's, let's, let's try that again. Let's just try that immediately again, but turn it down. Because I think we all just got done experiencing what some people refer to as an eargasm, but other people refer to as dying from loud sounds. All right, here we go. You may have heard the saying, prefer a composition over inheritance. The advice is a little vague, so I'm going to break it down. What is composition, inheritance, and why would you prefer one over the other? Both composition and inheritance are trying to solve the same problem. You have a piece of code that you're trying to reuse. Inheritance is when you have a class that contains functionality you want to reuse. So you create a subclass extending its functionality. If you if, if, This guy sucks, actually. What was I saying? He was amazing. Do you see where his squirrely braces are? Okay. Do you see where his squirrely braces are? What is this? C-sharp? What are we looking at right now? Ridiculous, okay? Who puts next line squirrely braces, okay? This is absurd. Can we, can we? Everyone go, go subscribe to him and then tell him that his squirrely brace placement is awful. Yeah, code aesthetics my ass, more like ass Simply aesthetics. Simply extend a class. You've basically created a copy of the class with a new name. And then you can inject new methods to extend or override parts. Whoopsies, oh my goodness. Um... Sorry, I don't know what just happened there. I got super excited, and apparently. Then you can inject new methods to extend or override parts. You know, when you're sold this in college, or you're shown this in college, or you're shown it for the first time, it seems like this makes perfect sense. Every single time, I feel like this makes perfect sense. Like, somehow, this is the way you should solve things. Like, like on paper, this feels really reasonable. We have a rudimentary image class here. It represents an RGB image and stores it as a double array of pixels. The image class hides how the image is stored in memory and provides a method for looking up pixel values. We also have some stuff we can do to the image. We have a resize map. What language is this? This is this is C sharp, right? Am I am I catching this correctly? What I don't I don't I don't understand this thing right here. Okay, it is C sharp. I assume that's just like doing, okay, I get it, it's C-sharp. Hey, type one in the chat if you love C-sharp. Come on, let's see it. Let's go, let's go, let's run it, let's go. Make it happen. There you go, I love all the twos. Let's go, let's go, look at all those twos. Yes! <laughs> I knew it, I knew none of you liked it. I knew none of you liked it, you guys just think you do. Hey, but real talk, I think the guy's doing, uh, I think this person here, Code, code Aesthetics, is, is using Vim to write C-sharp, okay? Hey, that's cool. Method, which resizes the image by scale factor. And we have methods to flip the image horizontally or vertically. The library should support JPEG, ping, and bitmap images. But we also want to reuse all of these methods for the different types of images. So to support loading and saving these images, we add two abstract methods, save and load. I feel like this is where everything's going to fall apart. I can already feel like inside of my heart, this feels so right. This feels like exactly how you would do it. And then all of a sudden, it's just like shit goes so wrong. You're like, oh, crap. Um, well, to flip it vertically in ping you need to do you know it just it all then you just it's just it's just the worst and then we create the subclass jpeg image ping image and bitmap image it's always the same crap it is always the same crap look at this yeah this looks beautiful this, is, this is great honestly there are different great. versions of load and save this is great 
but also get all of the other methods for free. You don't like me calling it ping? A PNG is called a ping. An SNG is called a sing. What's wrong with you guys? And a GIF is called a GIF. Everybody knows this. A WebP? No, that's actually a WEBP. Okay, no one actually calls it WebP. They all they call it WEBP. Three. So when we load a JPEG image or a ping image, we can call resize on it and then resave it. Yeah. The resize method is reused for all of the image types. Clearly but a when bog. we call load or save, the overwritten version is called instead. Yeah. This works well, but now we want to create a version of an image that doesn't come from a file at all, but instead has some methods that allow the user to draw on the image. So we create a drawable image class and inherit from our parent image class. Yeah. But good. this is where inheritance starts to have issues. The downsides of inheritance is that you've coupled yourself to the parent class. The structure of the parent is thrust upon the child. We're oh, nothing like a good old fashioned thr thrusting. Forced to implement these two load and save methods in order to reuse our resize and flip code, even though they don't make sense for our subclass. All we can do is have these two methods throw an exception. To prevent this, we need to remove this method from our parent class and add a new parent class in between called file image that contained these two methods. Oh my goodness, this is like giving me nightmares. I can already feel. One time I made a game that was like a basic a Galaga style game. Uh, this was in C Sharp a long time ago with the X and A engine. You may not, you probably, most of you pr probably weren't even alive when X and A came out. And oh my, I, at one point I think I had seven layers of inheritance. It is where I realized I hate inheritance is is in the x and a welcome to costco vominos i love you thank you vominos oh my goodness vominos just did it he did the subscribe then the follow okay hey priorities priorities well, of course what do you mean you have a game object that has a welcome to a costco. position and, a, and an image you. associated with it or you just have a position then you have a drawable game object. Then you have a movable game object that inherits from draw because you know not all things drawn actually move. And then you also may have an acceleration if you wanted to add an acceleration. So you might have an acceleratable object. I don't know. I don't know. I was 19 years old trying to figure out game programming, reading X and A books from the internet. And guess what? I ended up with seven layers of inheritance. Okay, I didn't know what I was doing, but I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. And I learned then and there, I hate inheritance, but I didn't know what to do better. But this also breaks anyone who currently expects the image class to contain those methods. Yep. When new changes like this come, we're forced to edit all our classes. A very expensive refactor. This is the greatest downfall of inheritance. I find it similar to how the ideal cleanest database schema often causes problems when you need to scale. We've moved to NoSQL databases with tons of dirty duplication. Inheritance breaks down when- I don't, I don't agree with that last point. I feel like I, I've been following this guy, like me and him tracking one-on-one -on -one right there so good, and then he just throws out my squeal, or no squeal. Just like, you can't be just tossing out no squeal when we're talking about inheritance like that, okay? That's just... When you need to change the code. Change is the enemy of perfect design, and you often paint yourself into a corner early on with your inheritance design. Dude, this is why capital D design, like people that go into a, a room and design a system first fully on paper, boxes and arrows, all this kind of shit. I tell you what, this is exactly why it doesn't work. This is like, it, it, it's this, it's this right there. Is that you go in, you make all these decisions and then guess what ends up happening? Something because your coworker's like, hey, uh, I need all the video frames as well. And you're just like, Fuck. Fuck. I just met with you yesterday. What do you mean you need the video frames? Uh, I forgot. I, today I, I open it up and now I just need I just need it. I need it today. I didn't need it yesterday. And you're just like F me. I'm done. I I actually just I'm done. I cannot build my product. I have to throw away my entire design, my capital D design. 
I, I really, I'm all about the, the, the triple method. So if I'm making software to like what I consider a perfection level, I make it three times. If I'm making it to what I consider like production quality, I make it twice. Uh, first time I just go in there and I just like dicks out for Harambe and I just go, I, I mean, I'm just shitting code, right? You're just in there. You're just making stuff. You're yelling dicks out for Harambe and boom, you come out with like a one file, 600 lines. You don't know what happened. Fever dreams, sweat coming out the crack. Like, right. Like it's just like something happened from here to here. And then you take a step back. You understand the problem and that's when and how and where you fix it. You know what I mean? Dicks out, boys. Big dick energy. Can I get some Dr. Pepper? You know what I mean? You know, see what the shit I have to deal with? Am I doing a good Asmund Gold AI? You see the kind of shit I have to deal with? I get these messages all the time, okay? The big dick energy, boys. You know, uh, the big dick energy number one himself out here just trying to drink a little bit of Dr. Pepper. But anyways, real talk. Like, this is... Really, the only constant you should expect in anything you build is change. And that's why you should try to make as minimal amount of coupling as possible. Cat girls. Everybody knows cat girls with big boobs is way hotter. <laughs> this is because inheritance naturally asks you to bundle all common elements into a parent yes. class. Yes. But the soonest you find an exception to the commonality, it requires big wow. changes. Can we just like take a moment here? Again, this guy just incredible ability to talk about like to to create an animation that's so perfectly just displayed like all of our thoughts together like look at that like Early everybody totally understood design. like this, this look how good that was naturally asks you to bundle all common elements into a parent class but as soon as you find an exception to the commonality it requires big changes so our alternative is to use composition so what is composition You've already been doing it. Composition is the pattern you're doing whenever you reuse code without inheritance. If we have two classes and they want to reuse code, they simply use the code. Let's change our image classes to be composed instead. First, we're going to remove our abstract methods. First off, I'm actually really excited about this. I think this is actually a pretty cool idea that's going on right here. No one ever shows you like really concrete ways to do things. There's a lot of... Um, what's called, uh, how, how, how do you say this? There's a lot of, uh, whiteboard masturbation that goes on and there's not usually a lot of concrete stuff. So I'm actually very excited about this. I think he's doing a really good job right here. And so I really hope this, this goes well. This goes on from image. Vision. That was David Hasloff. And thank you very much. I genuinely appreciate that. 10 bangers dot Tyrael. Tyrael. I gave up the man. I know it's a different Tyrael. I know Diablo 3 is not spelled that way. Just let me just let me have my moment, okay? Just let me have my moment. Now, this is no longer an abstract class. It's simply a class that represents an image in memory. In our JPEG, ping, and bitmap classes, we no longer inherit image. But we'll keep our save and load methods. They'll just now be standalone, not overriding anything. The methods were accessing a bunch of stuff from the parent class. So Ping. what do we do about those? Ping. Well, instead of accessing them through this, we'll simply pass in the image in question instead. I'm liking that so far. Operations on top of an image is really nice. This is really, really nice. Like this is this is kind of what you want to see. Already, I'm I'm enjoying this a, a lot, a lot more right now. I'm a, I'm I'm really enjoying this. This is definitely no hand wavy. You're definitely right, Stegian. So now, image represents an image, and these other classes cleanly represent a specific file format. I can't look at that. I'm gonna vomit. Oh gosh. For whatever reason, smooth scrolling makes me want to vomit. Now, if our new drawing requirement comes in, we create an image draw class that takes an image to draw to, and the methods do their thing. We're no longer bundled to the file related stuff. Because we didn't force all the common elements into a parent class, we don't need to alter any of the other classes to add our image draw class. Now, the user no longer chooses the one class that suits their needs. They also combine classes together for their particular use case. So here, we're loading a JPEG image, drawing to it, and then saving it. Another app could do something different, like load a bitmap image, flip it, resize it, and then save it out as a ping. 
Inheritance is interesting because it actually combines two capabilities, the ability to reuse code, but also the ability to build an abstraction. Creating abstractions allow a piece of code to reuse another piece of code, but to also not know which piece of code it's using. You define a contract that both sides of the abstraction agree to. This gives the code the rough shape of the other code, but it doesn't know exactly what it is. Inheritance does this by allowing a consumer to think it's taking a class, but it's actually given a subclass instead. Then the code can operate like it always does, even if the system as a whole is doing something very different. If we go back to when our image code used inheritance, our application used the natural abstraction capability of inheritance by storing references to the parent class. When our app opens a file, we just figure out which subclass to create and then store a reference to it through the parent class. Lesson, polymorphism is great. <laughs> Interfacing is great. Then when the user clicks the save button, our save clicked method will get invoked and we'll just call the save method. And we're abstracted from whether it's the JPEG, ping, or bitmap. But with composition, you don't have parent classes. You're just using the types you want. Inheritance allows you to abstract because the methods of the parent class forms a contract. A contract that says that every child's class shall have at least these methods. So for our new classes without inheritance, we still want to be able to call our save and load methods without caring about which class it is. This is where interfaces come in. Instead of a full parent class with all its variables and methods, an interface simply... So I do think... Oh, let, let, me, let, let, me, let, let me hear what he has to say. ...describes the contract of what an object can do. In this case, we'll create an interface called image file, which... I do think that this is one of the big downfalls of TypeScript, which is they allow for properties and methods in their interface. I really love interfaces and interfaces allow you just to have like a shape of your data, right? A facade over what it actually is. And it's just fantastic to have these. But the moment you start introducing properties, I feel like it just starts breaking down, right? Uh, it just really starts becoming a huge pain in the ass. And I just really, I just really dislike that. You know what I mean? Uh, and then also on top of that, I think Rust did it right, which is if you define an interface and you have an interface method that you, you say you can use, you can create a second interface method and actually provide a default implementation which references the first interface method. I think that that's a really cool concept where you can actually get some of the benefits of an abstract class. Thank you, baby. Looking good. But it only is abstracted over that individual trait. Like, I think that that is a really, really, really amazing thing. Yeah, Dev. Yeah, Dev, you didn't know about this? Here, check this out. Okay, sorry. I'm going to derail this for a quick second just so you guys can see this. Uh, Faster Than Lime, if you haven't seen him, uh, great stuff. He has a great blog. He has some really good stuff. Uh, the, his Advent of Code series, I think it's day four. I want to say it's day four. I've, I've, yeah, here we go. Um, so he builds out this whole trait extension going on, right? So con range contains, right? Contains range. And Welcome to Costco. There you go. I love you. Let's see. There you go. Right here. If you define this method, you can follow up with contains or is contained. Welcome to Costco. I love you. In which you can actually do this thing right here. So I think that this is really fantastic. Right? So you can allow for default implementations if the implementation only uses what is inside the trade itself. To me, that is like... That's like the, where the big win comes in, right? This is where the big, yeah, this is what I used to, to harass uh, Rich Harris with. I just love this. Like when I see this, it makes me feel really amazing by it. Like I think that this is the truest, best way to have interfaces. It is, it's, it's genuinely the best. I, 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 I don't think there's a better way to have them that I can think of currently. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what makes it so good is that notice that it can't refer to anything that it doesn't know about. Since contains range must be implemented, it can it can use that method because it must be implemented. Right? That is that's radical, right? Like that is radical. <laughs> I love that. You know what I mean? That is just so sweet. <laughs> yeah, how do you 
Uh, I just know, I just know Fast and Lime. He's a good guy. Yeah. It's such a good idea that even Java does it. I think Java did it right then. Java, I mean, Welcome hey, thank you very much. I haven't used Java since 1.6, so I don't know what happened since 1.6. Um, I started using Groovy 2. Point whatever the hell it was, and that was awful. I hate Groovy. Let's see, Holland Prime, what do you think in uh, TypeScript using interface to describe behavior and types to describe the data? Uh, it's just too problematic. It's just too problematic. TypeScript interfaces are just naughty. I would just, in general, stay away from them for the most part. Uh, thank you, Graku. Welcome. For the most part, I'd just stay away from them. All right, so let's see where this is going. Represents the operations an image file can do. Load and save. Sorry. Now, like before, we save a reference to one of our implementations, but now through the interface. And when the user clicks save, we call save on whatever you. type you, was Graco. created. Interfaces are a much more lightweight way to do this because our interfaces are minimal. I hate the question mark operator. Like this, this, I actually dislike this altogether. It just, it makes me feel upset, right? Because it's hiding a problem. I, I don't, I don't interfaces like Interfaces are a much more lightweight like way to do this because our interfaces are minimal. Parent classes share everything by default, making them more difficult to change. But interfaces define only the critical parts of the contract and are easily tacked onto existing classes. Now that we have a nice abstraction for loading and saving files in our app, we can actually lift the creation of which image file out of our image app class. We'll simply ask the user of the class to pass in the interface instead. That way, this class can just focus on dealing with the UI commands. And the file class can be elsewhere. That's much better, right? This is much, much better. There's a name for what we just did there. Dependency injection. I'll do a whole video on dependency. Dependency injection is really hard. The problem is dependency injection is great until it's not. It's, 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 it's something that... Oh, I want to answer this so bad. We'll come back to this. Um... It's great until it's not great. It's great until it it's not great, right? When you when you get someone into really intense amounts of it and then default versions of it, it's really hard to debug through your code or to even understand where the code's going. Um, like I like dependency injection. I think it's a good technique to use. I find myself using it less and less uh, just because I always find that I end up getting into a place where it hurts. Like, like you have to pull up the doll and you ask me, where does it hurt? And then I draw a circle around the whole thing. You know what I mean? It can, it can, it can get, it can get ouchy. DI is almost not avoidable. Exactly. There's some levels of DI that makes sense. There's some levels of DI that doesn't make sense. Like one thing I find that people do with DI is like, say you're building a program to get data from a database and then do something with it. Now, for testability purposes, you could go full DI on this and do all the la 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 la, or you could do some nice. Uh, you could you could override the imports and get all this stuff in and, and inject mock classes and all that crap. I hate mock classes; they're always such a pain in the ass to use. Um, but ultimately, in the end, I find that most of my problems aren't getting data out of a database, right? Like these, you start building all these abstractions around it. It almost exclusively comes down to me using an interface that I can pass around and just make sure that that thing's correct, right? Like, you start, you, you know, like, DI works until it doesn't work. And the moment it starts expanding too much, oh, man, it can just become, it just becomes such a nightmare. I just, I remember being at the TVY code base at Netflix went all in on dependency injection. And so everything that you got was like a dependency injected item. So everything was like a functor, right? So everything, so you got your, you got your shit f***ed. You know what I mean? Like, Everything was a functor. And so, like, you just, like, to, to find out what the hell built your stuff was just impossible to figure out what the hell even built it. It was very emotional. Injection. But if you've heard the term before and wondered what it was, that's it. Passing in an interface for what you're going to use. I won't say that inheritance is as evil as some would say, but I will say that I almost never use it in my code. Composition isn't perfect. You do end up with a lot of boilerplate, needing to initialize all of your internal types, 
Many implementations will contain the same code repeated. And when there's also like a structural problem when it comes to composition, uh, I find that sometimes I end up with these like folders where it's just like, here's a bunch of functions for playing with events. Here's a bunch of functions for doing that. Here's a bunch of functions for doing this other thing. And sometimes I hate that. You know what I mean? Like sometimes all of a sudden I'm just like, I know I have something to pluck the timestamp out of this event, but I forge where it went. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like then I have to go like use references and go find it. Like it, it's not all beautiful. It's not all beautiful. Reused code. You often need to create a lot of wrapper methods where you simply return a call to an inner type. Yeah. But ultimately, composition reduces the surface area between objects, which gives you less friction as changes come in. Inheritance might be useful if you're working inside of an existing system that had highly repetitive code where you only needed to modify one thing. For example, if you had the need for 100 classes to conform to some specific interface, which half of them need the same boilerplate over and over again, you might say that that means that each class has too much responsibility. And you'd be right, but changing the plugin model would cost the team months of work. You might not want to put your effort into that just yet. If you do use inheritance, design the class to be inherited. I'd avoid protected variables with direct access, like we avoid making our variables public. You know, every time I've done anything with protected stuff, I always find that it's just not the way I wanted it to be. You know, the more you can separate out the implementation from each level, the cleaner it really is. For overriding, create an explicit protected API that you're supposed to override and access. Mark everything else as private, final, or sealed. This prevents bugs when changing your parent class. You notice he said those orders backwards. This is because of not understanding what your child classes have done. That was great. I really like Code Aesthetics. If you, if you don't know Code Aesthetics, you should go subscribe to Code Aesthetics. He's a really good job. I think he does a really, really good job with the stuff. I pretty much agreed with everything he had to say, other than that that no squeal one that he just tossed out right in the middle. Yeah, this is why uh, we use no squeal document stores. And I'm just like, whoa! <laughs> Calm down. Calm Welcome down a little Costco. bit. I love you. This is good, though. I don't have a strong opinion on inversion of control. I'd have to... I... Just like everything, it's useful when it's useful. It sucks when it sucks. I'm not convinced. I don't like no squeal. It just depends. Like there's some things that I don't like no squeal for. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it only has like seven videos so far. Uh, how was he noticed uh, this quickly? I, it, it's just, that's why. That's the thing is that when it comes to YouTube and it comes to the algorithm, it comes to everything, it's all about the fact like, does somebody watch your stuff, engage with it, and enjoy it? And they have their own metrics to determine that. And they also have limited screen uh, real estate. Hey, guys. Uh, they, they also have just limited screen real estate, and they can only promote so many videos at once. So when they do that, they have to make sure that if I'm going to show this, this square has a 7% chance of getting clicked, but only a one-minute watch time? Well, that sucks because that's 7% times one minute. Right, so that's like very little seconds watched. Oh, this one only has a 5%, but they're watching all 10 minutes. Boom, like that one's a way better one to put in this position. And then not only that, you also then have to start doing like, this person watches videos that is like this other person. You kind of have to think about it.